Before I start this review, I would just like to say I apologize for not getting this review out earlier, and I do apologize for not uploading as much as I should have lately, but everything should get back to normal. But now that that's been said, it's review time. What? Justice League has me in a mindset of in-between. Now, there's a lot of reasons why this movie made me feel this way, but ultimately, it doesn't matter why. In my eyes, there's no reason why this shouldn't be an amazing, epic film to me and not an in-between film. Like, it's not a great movie, but it's not a bad movie either. That's what I mean by in-between. I would like to start off with the characters. Starting off with The Flash. The Flash was funny to me. He was funny and awkward and the comic relief of the film. Unfortunately, the TV spots previous to the film being shown in the theaters did show a lot of the comic relief scenes that The Flash had, more than I would have liked. The character Aquaman was, to me, very quiet in this film. Uh, he didn't say much in this film, which is very unexpected because the TV spots and the trailers that we see before the film it makes you think that he's way more talkative than actually what he is in this film he's way more relaxed and sometimes too relaxed if i'm being honest wonder woman was wonder woman wonder woman was the same wonder woman we saw in bvs and she was the same wonder woman we saw in her standalone film which was a great wonder woman in those films and she was a great wonder woman in this film nothing changed about her still great still awesome Batman in this film made me look at the screen weird a couple of times. He is way more lighter and softer in this film than he was in the previous film, BVS. In BVS, he was more serious and broody and more menacing, which I think I prefer that version of Batman than the version of Batman that we have in this film. It was completely unexpected, and I think it would have fit better if he was the way he was in BVS versus the way he is now in Justice League. Superman... Bravo, he he dominated in this film. I mean, I mean, just straight up dominated. When he came into the screen, it was over with. Everything was over with. He shut everything down. And guys, no, this is not a spoiler that I'm talking about Superman in this film. If you didn't know that Superman was going to be in this film, you are completely lost. I am sorry. But yes, Superman is in this film. It's been talked about in the trailers. It's been hinted at in the trailers. Henry Cavill has been cast, interviews and stuff like that. He was on the panel of the Justice League. So, no, it's not a spoiler that Superman was in this film. Superman dominated and Superman was awesome. J.K. Simmons as Commissioner Gordon, I would have liked to see more. There were like only one or two scenes in the film that he was shown. And um, from the scenes that I did see him, he did pretty good. And I would have loved to see him more because I do like J.K. Simmons as an actor. I mean, everybody knows him as uh, J. Jonah Jameson from uh, Spider-Man, but he's one of those actors that can conform to any type of role. Steppenwolf, definitely not one of the most feared villains I've seen on the big screen. His objective and goal in the movie was pretty straightforward, and the Parademons basically were the perfect soldiers. Uh, creepy to look at, but the perfect soldiers, they basically did what he needed to be done. Um... Uh, in a timely manner. So definitely not one of the most feared villains that we've seen, uh, but definitely not the worst. And um, I think the CGI on him was done pretty well. And I think also that the things that he brought to planet Earth, as far as like the ships and the parademons and the terraforming of the planet, I thought it looked good on the big screen. Now, another important reason why I think this movie was in between for me is because I felt like the movie was rushed. Rushed extremely. I mean, when Batman went to recruit Aquaman, it was quick and very simplistic. I mean, literally, it was like 20 minutes, 10 minutes after Batman met Aquaman. And Aquaman was like, who are you? Get out of my face. And then Aquaman, 10 minutes later, was like... Oh, so you dress like a bat? You're crazy and stuff like that. It was like a, uh, it was just brief. I thought it would be more detective work trying to find Aquaman, but literally what you see in the TV spots before the movie is actually what is the whole thing that you see for Aquaman. 
The same thing with the Flash. You see the TV spots for Flash when Batman was in his apartment or whatever, or in his building, whatever he was living in. That's the thing that you see in the movie. Exactly. There's nothing more. There's nothing less. That's exactly what happens. Like I said, I think Flash is one of those characters that you see a lot of, of his parts in the movie before you actually see the movie. And I feel like uh, that's an injustice to some degree because I really don't really complain about the TV spots. But in this particular case, it was a, com a complaint for me because everything was shown, especially for the Flash. Cyborg in this film, I think, had the most unique integration into the film. He had by far the most unique story, and the character Cyborg I like very well. He did his job, he did everything that you would expect Cyborg to do, be the uh, information hub for the team and finding stuff out and integrating with technology and taking over technology when needed. Um, and I feel like uh, he was the least shown in the TV spots before the film, because there's a lot of things that are in the film that you don't see in the TV spots, which I enjoyed. And I also think that Cyborg, the standalone movie for Cyborg is going to be great because of the stuff that we've seen in this film. Um, now, like I said, I feel like the movie was rushed. I feel like the backstory of Cyborg wasn't really touched on um, that much. I mean, if you read the comics, you know, but people don't read the comics all the time when going to see these movies. So people really won't know what Cyborg was about before he became Cyborg, how he got into the accident, yada, 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 what accident it was. And I feel like the same thing for Aquaman. Aquaman's uh, transition from, you know, finding out that he was an Atlantean, and then before that, you know, he just thought he was a human. They didn't really touch on that at all. I'm pretty sure they're going to touch that in the Aquaman movie. I'm not saying that they should have. Uh, made a whole feel about it in the movie about, oh, okay, how did he find out he was a Um, you know, and stuff like that. All I'm saying is just a little bit. They didn't touch on that at all. He went to Atlantis one time and it was like a six to seven minute clip. I'm pretty sure they're going to touch about that in the Aquaman film, but uh, like I said, this movie was rushed and I feel like those two points kind of confuse people and can't really get people into the film as much without knowing a, a, a little bit of the backstory. I'm not saying the whole spill, but just a little bit of it. Now, with all of this being said, I am still mad that I'm not ecstatic after seeing this movie. I mean, come on, this is Justice League. There's no reason why I shouldn't be jumping for joy or, you know, just hyped up all night after watching this movie. There's no reason at all. Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Cyborg, and Aquaman are on the same screen, and I'm not ecstatic, and I'm a huge Superman fan. Superman is my favorite superhero. There's no reason why. That's why I say this movie is a failure to me. Now, let me reiterate, this movie is not bad. It's not bad, definitely not the worst movie that the DCEU has put out, but it could have been better. It didn't help out when Warner Brothers or DCEU, I'm not sure which one, said that the movie had to be two hours or less. I feel like that jumbled everything up and it could have been way better if it was able to be extended and give more depth and you know make me want to think about the movie more after i left the theater because as of right now i know i'm making a review about it and stuff like that i'm thinking about the movie now because i'm making the review but after this review is over with i'm not going to be thinking about this movie i'm gonna be thinking about some action sequences but that's it other than that i'm a movie guy i'm not gonna be thinking about it at all you know some people said and i heard People said that this movie was uh, disposable, and I agree with that, which makes me mad because this is Justice League. Now, you know, I understand that Marvel has put a, a huge pressure on the DCEU films, uh, but Henry Cavill even said even if there wasn't Marvel, I think the DC Extended Universe would be struggling, and I do agree with that, and that's coming from an actor himself, which is very bold for an actor to say, Henry Cavill, you are very bold for saying that, but I feel like this movie should have been able to have a longer time slot than two hours. I understand there was stuff with productions and, you know, the thing with Zack Snyder, you all know what happened with Zack Snyder's daughter. That might have changed things up. Um, I'm not taking away from that. I do feel sorry for your loss. Just as looking at the movie as a critic, I feel like they should have had a more than a two hour time span. Thank you guys for watching my review on Justice League. The link for the trailer will be in the description down below. And if you're new and like what you've seen, please make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications on my latest videos. And for all of you watching, please make sure you keep moving forward.